Hi guys, Assalamualaikum and greetings. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you on chapter 6, which is on the place. As you know, we have covered the two P's of our marketing mix, which the first one was on product. Um, and then we also have covered uh, price. Okay, so in this chapter 6, we're going to learn about place. So there are basically five things that we're going to learn. So uh, we're going to look into what are actually channel intermediaries and also their functions. After that, we're going to look into the consumer channel structure, the level of channel distribution intensity. And then we're going to look into some retailing, uh, ma uh, major types of retailing as well as the non-store retailing. Or we're going to look also the types of these non-store retailers. Okay, and lastly, we're going to look into the franchising. So, um, learning objective number one, which is channel intermediaries and their function. As you know, place is about talking about the placement of the product. Okay, so um, in order for a consumer to get a product from the manufacturer, they require intermediaries. Okay, so we have a marketing channel, right, or a marketing uh, intermediaries, okay, uh, or this channel of distribution. Okay, which is actually the set of interdependent organizations that facilitate the transfer of ownership as the product move from producer to the business user or even the consumers. So there are other names of these particular channel members, which are intermediaries, resellers, middlemen, okay, uh, which they will negotiate with one another. They will buy and sell products as well as facilitate the change of ownership. So marketing channel basically facilitate the physical movement. Okay, so they will be moving the product from the point of production, which is normally at the factory, okay, to the another location, which perhaps to the distribution um wholesaler or this warehouse, okay, or even the retailer's shops, right, before it actually reached to the consumer. So this actually representing the place or the distribution in our marketing mix, which encompassing the process involved in getting the right product to the right place at the right time, so that consumer will be able to get their product. So there are actually many types of organization that I told you just now, it is actually a set of interdependent, meaning they need each other, right? So uh, this organization participate in the marketing channel, which um, sometimes referred as what I call just now the intermediaries, resellers, and middlemen um, in our syllabus. So which in this chapter, we're going to look into retailers, merchant wholesalers, as well as agent and brokers. So these are their definition. So um, the primary difference between these um, intermediaries are actually whether they take title to the product or not. What does it mean by taking title? That means do they own the product or there is any ownership transferred or not from the uh, one seller to another reseller. Okay, so basically retailers, these are the firms that sell mainly to consumers. Okay, so they do take title to the goods which they sell. Next is the merchant wholesaler, which they facilitate the movement of products or even the services okay, from the producer, okay, um, sorry, from the manufacturer, okay, manufacturer are normally the producer, to the resellers, the government institutions or even the retailers. And normally this merchant wholesaler, they do take title to the goods which they sell. Lastly, the agent and also broker. So what do these agents and brokers do? They facilitate the sale of product from producer to the end user by representing either the head wholesaler or the retailers or even the manufacturers themselves. And only agents and brokers do not take title. That means they only um, help to uh, meet or to communicate, all right, to close a deal from the consumer Okay, and then they tell the wholesaler to actually get the product shipped or sent to the consumer or the buyer. So they do not take title, they do not hold the product, and they do not own that particular product that they are selling. So these are actually the summary of what they do. Okay, retailer, they sell to customers or consumers, okay, typically consumers, which normally buy things for their own personal consumption or household consumption. 
And then we have the merchant who seller just now I told you, uh, which buy goods from manufacturer. Um, one thing is that this particular merchant who seller, typically they will buy from the factory or the manufacturer in a very, very large quantity. Okay, so that's why normally this merchant wholesaler, they are the one that will be sell or selling the products in not that um, big or bulk to the retailer. So then retailer later on will sell the products um, individually, okay, for each consumers to actually consume. Okay, and uh, as I told you just now, agent and brokers, they do not uh, take title to the product. They only facilitate the sale. Okay, which they represent by uh, that particular uh, manufacturer or the uh, channel members. Okay, so there are basically three types of functions that are performed by these intermediaries. Okay, there are transactional function, logistical function, as well as the facilitating functions. So let's look at it. Here, in transactional uh, function, from the word transaction, okay? So normally the intermediaries, they will be doing contacting and promoting or even negotiating as well as do risk taking, all right? Um, that is just based on the transaction, okay? Transaction meaning to say it is just about, um, you know, trying to get things done, right? While there is also intermediaries that perform logistical function. So when you talk about logistic, it involves moving the physical goods, right? Which could be physically distributing the product, okay? That means transporting from one place to another place, okay? Um, which this transporting uh, and sorting goods, okay, to overcome of these particular discrepancies, which are the temporal discrepancy and also the spatial discrepancy. Temporal is the, the moment where consumer need it, and from the point where the products are being actually made, while the spatial discrepancy includes the space. Okay, talking about the space, how much space do that particular um, seller have in their store or their shop? Okay, other than that, this logistical functions also include storing. Okay, basically storing means you keep the product, maintaining the inventory, as well as protecting the goods, and also sorting. Okay, sorting, which overcoming the discrepancy of quantity and assortment. Okay, so you can actually sort out, right, by breaking down or heterogeneous supply into separate homogeneous stocks or accumulating, which combining similar stock into a larger homogeneous supply. Allocating, which you break a homogeneous supply into smaller or even smaller lots, right? And assorting, which you combine products into collection of assortment that buyers want to make the product available um, at one place. Okay, so you don't have to go anywhere else, but you just go to one shop to get everything that you wanted. Lastly, the third function is facilitating function. So facilitating is much more on servicing, yeah, giving service, which is like a research or even financial services. Now, moving on to the consumer channel structure. So, a product can take many routes to reach its final consumers. Like I told you, um, from the point where the product is being made in a factory, okay, till it reaches to the consumer, right? So, marketers search for the most efficient channel from the many alternatives that are available. So, marketing on consumer convenient goods, for example, like gums or candy, will have a different channel structure, okay, from marketing of uh, specialty goods, okay, like your iPhone, your laptop, or Mercedes Benz. So the two products require very different distribution channels. So let's look at what are the channel structure. Here, in this slide, you'll be able to see that there are actually four types of consumer channel structure. The first one we call the direct channel. Why is it a direct channel? Because the producer can sell directly to the consumer. That means in order for consumer to buy the product, they will only get it from the producer, which typically this type of channels are used for products like services because you cannot separate the service provider and also the consumer or the user, right? Or it could be also directly from the uh, producer's website. So the producer will actually uh, be able to get your orders, okay, the consumer directly order from the website of the producer, so producer will be able to sell directly to the consumers, okay. The second channel structure is the retailer channel. Why do we call it a retailer channel? Because we have retailers in the middle, 
rich mean these retailers typically large enough or they have many branches okay that can actually buy directly in large quantity from the producer and then sell it to the consumers um, next one is the wholesaler channel which involves the wholesaler before it sells to the retailer and reach the consumers so typically this wholesaler they are very large and they will buy the producer's product or the product that been uh, manufactured in the factory and then they will sell it to the smaller retailers okay so these retailers then sell it to the consumers and lastly the longest channel which involve many intermediaries is what we call the agent or broker channel so of course there are agent and broker involved here which these are the agent or broker that actually um, represents the producer or the manufacturer that will actually get the wholesaler to buy the product from the producer and then of course the same thing happened here okay the wholesaler will also sell to the retailers and retailers later sell to the consumers okay so there are four types of consumer channel structures namely direct channel retailer channel wholesaler channel and also agent or broker channel next one is the level of distribution intensity okay this is learning objective number three which we're going to look into the three distribution intensity which we call here exclusive intensity selective or intensive okay so we're talking about the number of outlets here so if it is an intensive distribution strategy meaning to say there will be many intermediaries involved many sellers involved okay while the uh, opposite extreme which is the exclusive distribution intensity meaning to say a very few number of outlets okay while the selective distribution intensity is in the middle so let's look at each of these three yeah, in the intensive, meaning to say, um, companies, right, the manufacturers that uses this strategy, okay, is trying to achieve mass market selling, okay. Um, normally, it is popular with the health and beauty aids and also convenient goods that must be available everywhere, okay, which the number of intermediaries are many. So, you can see examples here. Well, the uh, exclusive one that like I told you just now it has only one or a very few okay single intermediary for products that require special resources or positioning which typically use for specialty goods and also major industrial equipment these are for the business buyers okay so normally the number of intermediaries is actually one in each market for example one in West Malaysia one in Sarawak okay one in malaysia even okay so some of the examples include like bmw cars okay the rolex watch well selective intensity level which where the company will work closely with selected intermediaries who meet some criteria all right which typically use for shopping goods and some of the specialty goods where they engage into several number of intermediaries okay where they don't want it to be too many or available everywhere because um, they wanted to uh, make sure that these particular sellers meet some criteria especially talking about the uh, brain image of that particular product okay so these are some of the examples moving on to the fourth learning objective here which is understanding retailing okay so what is actually retailing so we learned just now about retailers as you know retailers are those uh, shops right that sells or the intermediaries that sells to consumers so retailing refers to all activities directly related to the sale of goods and services to the ultimate consumers for personal non-business use okay um, when we go for shopping at the groceries or you go for your uh, what they call it uh, haircut okay you get getting your hair done buy clothes you buy books and many other products or services these are actually involved in retailing okay so there are millions of goods and services provided by retailers all right that mirror the needs and style of our market okay the Malaysian consumers so we're going to learn the seven types of retail operation number one you have department store or departmental store specialty stores supermarkets drug stores convenience store discount stores and also restaurant 
Okay, so um, of course, there, so in a supermarket, there are what we call this particular scramble merchandising because in supermarket, you will be able to get a lot of things there, okay, where they, they put everything in that particular supermarket. Well, in the discount stores, okay, there are four types actually of discount stores here. You have full line, okay, which is also known as the super center or extreme value, um, the specialty discount store, all right, so where these are actually quite category killer. Okay, like for example, when you go to Mr. DIY, for example, okay, so Mr. DIY is actually a category killer because um, they do sell uh, at a discounted price, okay, of the items which are specialized in some of the household um, appliances, sorry, not household appliances, household uh, items, okay, and then they are called category killer because when there is uh, that particular shop, okay, uh, the other shops will be affected in terms of their sales because may, m most people would prefer to buy at this particular discount store. Okay, and then there is warehouse type of stores and also some factory outlet or we call it the off-price stores. So let's look at each of these, right? So department stores, there's have, they have several departments under one roof, okay? So typically when you go to a shopping mall, then you will see that, oh, okay, so this is the uh, department store or departmental store, which normally the anchor of that particular uh, mall, all right? So if you go to the spring, for example, then you will see Parkson as the anchor or the department store, which they have variety of shopping and also specialty goods, okay, including the apparel, cosmetics, electronics, okay. Or you go to Aeon Mall, right? So the Aeon itself is actually a department store, right? Where you can see at several level, okay, different level of the that particular mall has uh, the shop itself, the Aeon Mall, uh, what do you call it? Aeon Department Store departmental store and you can go to um, ladies section the men section the um, household goods section kids section okay there are also goods like uh, your uh, cosmetics even food and so on all right so this is what we call the departmental store or department store next is the specialty store as you have learned what is a specialty products so typically the specialty products are sold in specialty stores which they are specialized in a given type of merchandise, right? And they carry a deep but narrow assortment of merchandise and offer attentive customer service and a knowledgeable sales person. Okay, like for example, you go to Apple Switch, then they will sell that kind of product, okay, Apple products only, right? Or you go to um, Levi's jeans stores, so you will see the, the products there are only uh, Levi's denim, okay, and some shirts and also blouse, but um, you can get a assortment, okay, a, a very a variety of uh, types of denims in that particular store. Next one is supermarkets. So supermarkets are relatively large, low cost, low margin, with high volume and self-service operation. Okay, so these, these uh, supermarkets are basically designed to serve customers' total needs for groceries and household products. So when you want to buy groceries, you go to a supermarket. Okay, now you want to buy your instant noodles, your coffee, your tea, your frozen food, okay, or your fish, or your vegetables, okay, things that you go like at the Everice, Le Papa, or Takyong. Okay, so you get many um, what they call groceries items there. Yeah, including cooking oil. Okay, you can also get your toothpaste there, uh, some of your um, household products like detergents, okay, and so on. Next one is the drug stores. Drug stores is typically known as the pharmacies, right? So they sell pharmacy related products. Okay, they don't sell those um, illegal drugs. Yeah, they do sell those legal and prescribed drugs, which uh, there are pharmacies, right? They normally will be giving you the uh, prescriptions on drug plans or even um, selling to you the medicines which are prescribed by your doctors, okay? So you can um, go to the pharmacies, right? Or the drug stores, okay? So other than that, the traditional, uh, what they call it, kedai ubat, okay? You will see normally there are Chinese traditional medicine shop or stores, okay? that sell some of the traditional kind of uh, medicine, right? Or the alternative medicine, they call it. So that is also called the drug stores.
Next one is the convenience store. From the word convenience, you know they are selling typically the convenience product. Okay, so they carry limited line uh, of high turnover convenient goods. There are actually like a miniature of supermarket. Okay, um, what is the, the most different thing about this convenience store is that they have uh, products th that are limited because um, normally the size of this particular convenience store are not as large as supermarket. So they cannot afford to have all of the product range. Okay, for example, instant noodle. They may have only a few brands. Unlike at the supermarket, they have many brands, many flavors. But at the uh, convenience stores, typically they have the what they call a high turnover convenient goods. High turnover convenient goods means that the product are frequently purchased. Okay, the moment you put it on that particular shelf, then one or two days, then the product will be sold out. Okay, so this is what we call the high turnover goods. Okay, and they are normally open long hours, 24 hours, and they are located nearby the residential areas. Okay, like a very famous one, like fam uh, we have 7-Eleven, okay, um, KK Mart, 199 Super Mart, Family Mart, and so on. Next one is the discount stores. Okay, discount stores, they carry standard merchandise, so at lower prices with lower margin and higher volumes. Okay, so uh, these discount stores, they offer a large assortment of routinely purchased food and non-food products. Okay, like you go to Tesco or even um, we have Walmart. Last time we do have that um, K4, right? So now there, there are no more K4. We have only Tesco. Um, or even here we have, let's say, the Mr. DIY. Yes. Okay, we also have Emart supermarket. But uh, although they call it the supermarket, but uh, by category, okay, by category, uh, it is actually a discount store because um, they do sell this large assortment of products that are including food and also non-food item and typically the prices are lower than the other places so you can compare prices for example at imat how much is the price or if you go to takyo or lipapa right so the prices are actually um higher at those supermarket but at uh, imat for example the prices are cheaper okay lastly okay the types of retailers are uh, is the restaurant okay so what is actually a restaurant of course you know you go and eat there or you drink there all right which straddle the line between a retailing establishment and a service establishment so um the retailing here meaning to say they do have uh, products for you to buy for you to eat okay and the services here includes where they actually serve you the food Okay, so the tangible products are food and drinks, while the service element include the food preparation and also the food service where they allow you to dine in there, eat at a particular restaurant. They serve you with the plates and drinks and they bring it to your table, right? And also, a restaurant offers takeaway and also some delivery services. Okay, so of course, you know all the examples like pizza, okay, you go to uh, Sushi King, you go to McDonald's, KFC and so on. Okay, so those are restaurant. Next one, the non-store retailers. Okay, the seven retailers that I mentioned just now from the departmental store until restaurant, those are stores where it has a physical uh, brick and mortar or physical location. Okay, so when you talk about the non-store retailers, okay, there are four types of non-store retailers. We have direct retailing, the vending machines, the direct marketing, and also electronic retailing okay so don't get confused with direct retailing and also direct marketing here okay so direct retailing is the person normally go from door to door of course nowadays people don't go door to door anymore but normally they do make appointments or they make a, a party like tupperware for example they always have this tupperware party what happened in this tupperware party is that they invite people to come to their house for a tea or a brunch or even a dinner or not normally a uh, brunch or high tea lah, okay so what happened they they serve food for this particular um friends okay friends of friends or they, they ask people to come and join that particular party and then at the same time they offer or they sell this particular product okay same goes to norway they also do that okay so what happened is that you go and meet people and then you bring the product together and then you 
sell to them. There is direct retailing. Of course, you know vending machines that sells in the machines where you put your coins or uh, notes, okay, that sells normally soft drinks and also food, okay. But there are also uh, other than that, like uh, I think recently they they had viral this uh, Siti Karija. You know, Siti Karija is actually the uh, woman's praying praying uh, attire, okay, or telekong, right? Which they sell also in the vending machine. Right, so you can just buy uh, anytime. The good thing about vending machine is that uh, it is sold uh, at uh, many places that are convenient for people to go, and also it operates twenty four hours. Okay, there's a vending machine. Next is direct marketing. Okay, so direct marketing is different in the way that in direct retailing you have the product and you sell directly, but in direct marketing you are not selling the product directly but you are doing marketing basically promoting the product okay through direct mail or emails right or uh, sending the catalogs to the post box like real post box okay not your email box right and also doing the telemarketing okay so here in direct marketing people will be able to actually order from the catalog right or from that particular um flyers or brochure Okay, or even um, calls, all right, call the numbers. Of course, uh, when you talk about Pizza Hut, for example, when you wanted to order or Domino Pizza, okay, you call the number and then you order your pizza and then they will send and deliver to you. So there is direct marketing, okay. And lastly, the fourth part of the non-store retailer is what we call the electronic retailing. So what is actually electronic? Of course, you know, using the electronic devices, okay? So today, we have not only just the computer, but also your mobile phone, okay? So that is considered as online retailing, where you can buy directly online using the apps, okay? Like when you have your Shopee, or you have the Lazada, the Zalora website, and so on, okay? Not only just the website, they even have their own mobile apps which you can order directly from the applications. And also, there is what we call the TV uh, retailing or the electronic retailing using TV, okay? Shop at home, like Go Shop, which um, they show you, they demonstrate to you about that particular product in the TV channel, right? And allow you to actually order from that particular after you watch that particular uh, session or program, okay, like CJ, Wow Shop or Go Shop, right? Lastly, okay, in this particular chapter, we're going to learn about franchising. So, franchise, okay, is actually a continuing relationship in which a franchiser grants to the franchisee the business rights to operate or sell the product. So, who is actually a franchiser? Franchiser is the one who is actually the originator of the trade name. The one who actually first created that, okay? The product or has that particular methods of operation and grants, okay, operating rights to another party to sell its product. So, instead, let's say I have a product, I have a restaurant or I have this particular business. Instead of me uh, expanding the business by opening up a new branch, so I need to do everything in that particular branch. So if I don't want to do that, I can still expand my business through franchising, which I just sell the rights okay, to, to everybody or to anyone that can be considered or qualified to be my franchisee. So these franchisees are actually individuals or businesses that have been granted the right to sell another party's product, which is the franchisor's product. Okay, so instead of me trying to find people, try to find a location and so on to open up a new branch, so I just let the franchisee to find all those things. Okay, so the main difference between having a branch and also a franchisee is that if I open up a branch, I am the one that responsible for everything about that particular branch. But if I want to, to expand my business, but I don't want to do all those branching kind of uh, hassle. I just allow other party, which is the franchisee, to find their own location, to, to find their own employees, to manage that particular business by just selling the same business like what I am selling. Okay, so the franchisor originates the trade name, okay, the product and so on just now, and the franchisee in return, okay, pay the franchisor for the right to use this particular name, product or business methods. 
Okay, so in franchising, there is agreement. Okay, of course, you need an agreement between the franchisor and the franchisee. Okay, the two parties here involved, franchisor and also the franchisee, which you agree to actually uh, abide to the SOPs, to the law and regulation, to the agreement, right? Uh, rules and regulation, basically, uh, to sell the product that what the franchisor uh, is selling. Okay, usually it lasts up to 10 to 20 years. And of course, it can be renewed after that. Okay, so to be granted the right as uh, a, a, the franchisee, okay, uh, the franchisee need to pay initial one-time franchise fee. Okay, so the first uh, fee that you need to pay as a franchisee is that a franchise fee. Because you cannot simply think that, oh, okay, today I wanted to open up a coffee shop and then I wanted to give my coffee shop name Starbucks. No, you cannot do that. But if you, let's say, wanted to open up a Starbucks, all right, so you can be a franchisee of a Starbucks. So you pay to the Starbucks franchiser the franchise fee one time uh, and after that you also need to pay to the franchiser what we call the royalty fees. So this one time fee or the franchise fee is only once that you pay. Normally it could be uh, Starbucks could be 1.5 million so 1.6 million ringgit Malaysia. Uh, for the royalty fees, right? so you pay uh typically monthly or uh yearly okay which usually range uh from three to seven percent of your gross revenues or your sales okay from your sales other than that okay you also need to pay what we call this advertising fees because you know that when you they, when you watch advertisement of, of of this franchise right it is not about one location or one branch or not branch one franchisee okay it's about the whole franchise, all right? So therefore, normally, you also need to pay advertising fees, which usually cover the cost of promotional materials and if the franchise organization is large enough, regional or national advertising, okay? And lastly, the forms of franchises, okay? So basically, there are two types of franchise. Number one is franchise based on product or trade name. And the second one is franchise based on business format. Okay, business format is easy. That means it's from top to toe or it's everything where the franchiser give the rights, okay, to the uh, franchisee of the business format or the approach of how to do the business. That means from every single item, the franchisee needs to follow and use the uh, business format given by the franchiser. Some of the examples include, of course, you see Starbucks, Burger King, and also uh, Petronas, Petrol Station. So what happened is that you have to follow exactly what franchises said to you from the suppliers, from the raw materials that you buy, from even the furniture, okay, or the packaging and everything has to be similar or exactly the same like what the franchiser has told you. Well, the product or trade name. Uh, franchise is just the transfer of product the way how you actually produce it or the way how you sell it could be depending on that particular franchisee itself which this franchisee typically typically known as dealer okay so the manufacturer will give the license of franchise to the franchisee typically the license on how to produce the product okay uh, then the dealer will sell it okay to the consumer that particular product so typically uh, this type of franchise are related to uh, products like cars okay and also beverages like coca-cola pepsi and so on okay so um, the way how they do it is could be different okay but what is important is that the product itself must be the same as what manufacturer is selling the way how the dealer wanted to have the factory layout the shop uh, image okay the location and so on all are depending on the particular dealer to sell it to the consumers all right so with that we finish chapter six if you have any questions please do ask me in our telegram chat thank you guys bye bye